I was a very violent person as, as a young individual in Liverpool. I, I was quite happy to be punched. I was quite happy to punch people. And a criminal record for it, you know, it's, it's something that's coming out because I want to be op open about the challenges that lays ahead for me. And I, I can say to people, I know what it's like to lose your rag on a pitch. But in all the things I did, all the many sending offs I did, all the things that I've done, I never once thought I was going to hit a referee. Never. Because that's not a fight. Because he, they're not going to hit you back. So all these tough guys you think they can uh, smack a referee with these gobshites, just have, have, have a whiz at yourself. Because mm. you just, you, the players don't want to play with you. The, you people, you, they just think you're a knobhead. Because when, if, you, if you're over a game of pool and that was refereeing in a pub, 100% you wouldn't do it. Mm. 100% you wouldn't do it. Yeah. What's a gobshiteness? Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode six of The Final Whistle. So I just need to say that not only can Martin not count, obviously, but neither could me and Nathan, because this is actually episode seven. We lost an episode somehow. Don't know how, but this is episode seven. Um, this one's going to be another roller coaster rise. We're going to try to have some fun, talk about some decent content. I may be able to help you out there. There's a match official on the field to play, but also we're going to talk about a subject of referee abuse and assault. Um, and we, what happened to our friends and colleague, Satya Mkoki, we want to be able to, um, you know, discuss about that and see how this could be a game changer. This horrible event could be a game changer for the referees going forward. Yeah, as always, uh, Martin, you mentioned that um, Satyam there, what's happened to him over the weekend. I'll drop a video right here for anyone that's missed it. It's hard if anyone has missed it at this point because it's hit the mainstream media. Let's just talk about the timeline of what happened. He was refereeing Saturday uh, when he got assaulted. The video will we'll show that, obviously. Uh, that evening, he posted into Ref Support UK uh, uh, of, of his injury. Uh, and it was a, cut, a big cut above his eye. Uh, and obviously, he would bled out. Uh, he had all the gores and stuff like that. Um, and I'll, I'll share the post that he put on there as well. Basically, what he said. He had hundreds of comments of support. Um, but one of the concerning things that a lot of people raised was uh, that he was told that the player who had assaulted him, and this assault was, he'd been hit in the head, closed fist as well, uh, three times. Um, there was an allegation that the police had said, oh, this lad's going to be a teacher, he's just qualified. Maybe don't press charges because that might affect his career as a teacher. Did you guys, have you read those comments as well? Do you know anything more about that? Yeah. Yeah. I was, understand the sentiments really, because I just say, I've talked to him, communicated with him quite a lot, checked on, you know, every day, particularly in the evening, because we find out when someone gets assaulted um, in the evening, it catches up with them, they're lying in bed. Mm. But, you know, they start thinking, oh, I have flashbacks of it. You know, so we sent him lots and lots of messages and he's a very, very genuine kind of man. So I can see that his default setting would not want to be uh, to ruin someone's career. However, the question uh, was asked by a few uh, footballers, other referees, people who were just fans saying, well, if that particular gobshite can't control his, his, his temper on a football pitch, do you really think he can be trusted in front of a, a, some children? Or do you want your children to be taught by a gobshite like him. And I think I'm pleased that um, he, Shatty Ham's gone press charges. I think he's going today to, to, to just get filmed at uh, 5 to 5 on, a, on the 12th of August. That he is pressing charges. He is going, we hopefully he will be arrested. He's continues to get our full support. And, and it's the right decision. Thankfully, he's sleeping okay. He's a... Uh, He's got the support of his family and friends around him. And what's been wonderful is, like you said, Anton, I know uh, Nathan's been, been equally impressed and equally concerned about this, is that the amount of positive comments that we've got, it's, I've possibly not, not seen a, a post like this, both on Twitter <laughs> and Facebook. I don't know, you know what your take is on, on it, Nate. 
Yeah, no, I just think that, you know, I think I, I agree with everything you've said. And obviously, I, I just like you speak there, Martin, because obviously I've not spoken to the lad. And obviously, you have spoken to the lad. So, you know a lot more about the particular situation than I do. Um, I just think about, you know, what it was when I was, um, when, when I've been involved in something like that, not as the victim, but as two players assaulting each other on, on a pitch, you know. Um, I, I, I was involved in a game where there was a serious incident where one player violently, seriously assaulted another player. Uh, and even I had flashbacks about that, you know, in the days that followed. Um, and it took me a long time to get over that. And that was the worst situation that I'd faced. And I, and I never... I never, th- I never thought that, you know, that was kind of thing was going to happen to me. I think I'd been refereeing three or four seasons at that stage. I'd never come across anything like that that affected me in that way. And, and I'd never, ever had an incident where I was having flashbacks, intrusive flashbacks, um, you know, to, to an incident that happened in a game. So, I, you know, I'm not saying, oh, I thought I was invincible and this and that and the other. I just never thought that I'd, I'd have a situation that would affect me like that. Um, and, and obviously going on from that as well, there was another assault um, over the weekend, another physical assault, and in, up in Sheffield, we um, we, had, we heard about the the spitting uh, thing at a referee uh, that, that took place in a friendly there as well, and I, and I think that at the moment we all know what's going on with the global pandemic that, that we're living through. I think that's you know if you spit somebody now, you could kill them. And there's absolutely no doubt about that. Okay, we know that. It, it, the, the virus is indiscriminate and there's a lot of challenges that we face with that. When we, you know, we talk, we've talked about that um, previously in previous episodes and, and we know all about that. So I think that, you know, you've got two situations there. We've got three situations there, but you talk about the situation that we just talked about at length, Martin, and also the fact that the spitting uh, incident that took place. So basically one spit can kill as as can one punch. We've heard for many, many years, one punch can kill. So he had one punch, could have killed him if he caught him in the, in the wrong place. And it was in his eye area. So, you know, it's not too far away from the temple, which is a really, really serious thing. And, and there's absolutely no way that we can't know that that was where he was aiming to, to punch him or whatever. So we've got to be really careful. We've got to treat these things. And I'm again, I endorse that. I am pleased to see that justice is, is going to take place in this particular situation. At the moment, spitting at somebody could kill them, and and it's always been the case that one punch can kill. Well, one, one, some of the comments I've seen on Twitter had sort of a humorous angle on them, where if he can't be human, so it's something so serious. But some of them saying, look at him, he can't even throw a punch, never mind, act all tough guy. It's all right if, you know, I'd like to see this lad in the ring. And we, we've said going forward um, in the past, and it's something I know we're going to talk about, is one of the things I want to do, I want to do a video. If anyone's out there who knows boxers, we want to do a video and then add the person who's been assaulted. Young girls, we got uh, Rhiannon Stevens, who she wasn't assaulted, but she was threatened and, and verbally abused, who, who we've worked with. We'd like to have her say, would you tell me to F off, go back to the kitchen? And then the next one is, say, Ricky Hatton, saying, would you say it to me? And then maybe then have another another victim yeah. of assault. And, and have this story where, like I said, and I purposely said gobshite, and I'm, I know people say we shouldn't swear, but these people are gobshites. Mm. They're absolutely gobshites. They say things to referees that if they're in the pub, they 100% wouldn't say it. And some of the things that we have, and if there's any of these people out there who think they're big tough guys because they smacked a referee. We've had soldiers, bouncers, kickboxers, bricklayers, who most frustrating is they know they could absolute win a fight against these gobshites who's been, who's been attacking them or abusing them. But because they're dedicated to the game and the role of the match official, that they don't want to let them down. We've had soldiers come to me on, on our hotline and said, one of the worst things is, I was a soldier, I defended this country. I'm trained in, in martial arts and I could have absolutely battered that lad. But I chose not to because that's not the right thing to do for the game. Mm. That's not yeah. where we want the game to go. Which we it's also about them being a bigger person, Martin. And I think that, yeah. that, that is absolutely crucial to the to the point of this. And you talk about, um, you know, obviously, it's Satyam, is it? You, you talk about that. You talk about that, that lad who's, who's tried to do the right thing and he's tried to be fair, but actually realises that he was being too fair and that, you know, justice does need to be done. And again, I think that, you know, the majority of referees, we've talked about this before, they do it for the right reasons and it's because they're good characters and they're good people and they make good decisions, 
not, not I'm not talking about technical football decisions, free kicks, penalties. I'm talking about life decisions yeah. and the way that they conduct themselves, the way they go about their business, and ultimately the way that they represent the FA, whose badge they wear when they go out to referee. Mm. It's mm. it's. I'm going to say it's it's all levels as well, like. Uh, the four incidents of uh, assault over the weekend. Uh, Sat yams. Uh, the one from uh, southeast London uh, with, with the Snapchat video um, yeah. where, where they all just seem to pile on. Um, yeah. There was the spitting one in Sheffield as well. Mm-hmm. And there was a match in Russia where, um, the, again, the referee was, at, was, was sparked, knocked out. Uh, but the offender, the one that punched the referee in Russia was a former Russian national football player. Not, not He was the captain of their Euro 2016 team. And if you've got incidents where not even your former professionals, your former captain of your national team is striking the referee, he, it, he needs to be made an example of. That, don't get me wrong, everyone that strikes a match official needs to be just removed from the game because that's that's something we, we talked about signed eye bans in, in the previous episode. But firmer sentences and uh, again I, I really i felt for satyam when he said I, I felt like i shouldn't um press charges because it might affect his life i'm sorry but that lad wasn't thinking about how he's going to affect your life when he hit you and crossed the head three times yeah. um yeah. and and it is like you say now the, the people that referee generally are the ones that do think of the bigger picture they're not ones that uh, are hot-headed because you can't be a hothead and a, a, a referee if you like yeah. that you'll you'll stop refereeing after a few games because you'll yeah. you'll find yourself getting so wound up that the, the refereeing isn't for you yeah um, and i think martin talked about that didn't he because i think martin alluded to the fact that he'd been a hothead player and he was a bit of a hothead when he came to refereeing but because he changed his approach to football he became somebody who was successful enough to get onto the football league. Mm. I, I, and and it's weird. Even even other refs who are now who've who've took up playing who who took up refereeing rather who have played, uh, uh, I'll tell you that they feel quite guilty. Now all the things I did, I, I know, you know, it will come out fair that uh, as we go down this and other things I do personally about my journey of, of I was a very violent person. As, as a young individual in Liverpool, I I was quite happy to be punched. I was quite happy to punch people, and a criminal record for it. You know, it's it's something I, it's coming out because I want to be op- open about the challenges that lays ahead for me. And I, I can say to people, look, I know what it's like to lose your rag on a pitch, but in all the things I did, all the many sending offs I did, all the things that I've done. I never once thought I was going to hit a referee. Never. Because that's not a fight. Because they're not going to hit you back. So all these tough guys who think they can uh, smack a referee with these gobshites, just have, have a whiz at yourself. Because mm. you just, you, the players don't want to play with you. The, you people, you, they just think you're a knobhead. Because when, if, you, if you're over a game of pool and that was refereeing in a pub, 100% you wouldn't do it. Mm. 100% you wouldn't do it. What's yeah. a gobshiteness? The, ref- the referee's the softest target on the pitch. The softest 100%. target. 100%. And, what, and what, what's going to happen here? We've got to realise that... I'll be the first to admit it, but I'm embarrassed how bad I was. I am. And even, even you know, the county FA will deny this, but I was actually banned from, from the game when I started refereeing. They were that short of referees. They can prove and tell the right, but they were that desperate to do it. Which, and it helped me that I was a player who, who got into refereeing. I told you the story about the time when I moved down from Somerset to Liverpool, from Liverpool to Somerset, where I am now. And I was trying to acclimatise to how the, it goes. Is it down here? You know, bars on the windows. You know, going to an off license in Liverpool is like going to a bank down here. And and it was a, re, a real acclimatisation. Some wonderful people in Liverpool. Some brilliantly lovely people. But they're just a different way of life. And down here, I couldn't understand why people didn't want to fight. When I was coming down to these little village, I, I, I just couldn't understand it because that was my default setting. And then as I grew out of it and I realized the people I was knocking around with thought I was a gobshite because I was wanting to fight with everyone. And I was getting banned and I was getting, you know, missing crucial games just because I couldn't control my temper. And then I realized that it isn't because mm. you think it's great. So, and I go, so I'm, I'm fighting with people. Everyone thinks you're a knobhead, but they just don't tell you because that's the way the game is. And, and when we get realized that, that people, 
the majority of people in football are good people. They're really good people. But there's just someone who just don't want to stand up to these people on the such lines who are abusing young referees, like we said about Ryan Stevens. People just want to step up because you just think, oh, it's not on my arguments. But we've got to have this strategy. Football teams have got to stand up. Don't sign nobeds. I know we can't do a hashtag saying don't sign nobeds. <laughs> but let's not sign nobeds. Yeah. Enjoy your game more. And we, we said, didn't we, man, that picture we talked about, about the, uh, the rainbow coming out, out of the referee's head. And it was like a lovely catchment of a photo. We said, be a better game. It's come back worse. Yeah. It's destroyed me inside, really. When, I, when I'm, I'm, I take these calls, I get these messages, I get these videos. And I really, really thought that all of us had missed the game. And in fairness to you, and you call this, you said, you worry, we put it up on a blog, you, you worry that when they come back, everyone's sort of being captured in this cage and want to get out and do it. And I was like, I oh, really hope that doesn't happen. So, well, unfortunately, you were right on it. It's, it's really hard. And that other one in London, which hasn't really had much coverage, because the referee hasn't gone to the police. And, and I, I've challenged London FA because they said there wasn't an assault. Now, they've got the video. And I'll challenge London FA right now. The problem is, if a referee doesn't report the assault, you think the assault doesn't happen. And that's nonsense. Yeah. You have a video of a player getting surrounded and getting kicked on the floor. And you're saying there's not an assault. Now, it's no coincidence, is it, to me, that I, and I, and I, I have me on this London FA... The Fernando Lopez case was in also in London. And I don't think he, he was going to report it at first. So challenge me and, and tell me, is there a trend that you do or not want your referees to report assaults? Or am I, am I wrong? Get in touch with me. Email me, do what you want. All my contact details are out there. I'm calling you out because we've been told that someone from London FA took that referee out of reporting that. So, so prove me wrong, prove me wrong, or change. There's, there's got to be something from the county FAs as well, where if the referees, for whatever reason, and I know, listen, the referee, you're out there, you're by yourself, you've got 22 players, it wasn't that bad, and all this, uh, you know, don't do it, he's got to work, he's got a family, he's got a this, he's got that. You've got to kind of put that on the shelf. If there's a video, if there's another party with, with evidence, and the referee's still saying, oh, yeah, okay, so it wasn't that bad, because... He doesn't want to make things worse for himself because just because the final whistle blows, it doesn't mean it's the end of that game for that referee. He takes away all of the emotions, everything he's been through on that pitch. And potentially, you know, the the tweets, the messages, anything can, can still come through, especially if there's been a massive incident like an assault uh, to pressure the referee not to do anything, not to report it. Are you still going to put... We get out on yellow and red cards at the end of the game. Oh, you're not going to put that red in eye of ref. Oh, it was only a, it was only a handball. Don't let don't let, let the lad miss a few weeks of football. If there's a if there's video evidence, and it's submitted either anonymous, uh, anonymously or through a, a known individual, then the county FA I think has a duty of care to the integrity of of, of football as well. To to kind of just say okay, well no, there hasn't been a report received, but clearly we've got evidence. Um, and we we need to act upon it, not bury your head in the sand, because that that denial of what is actually happening is going to lead one day to a referee getting seriously debilitated or the worst case scenario. And we've all alluded to it and it's out there on social media. There are referees that are scared that it could be them or it could be a referee that they know that gets hit by a player and it kills them. It's already happened in other countries. It's happened in the United States. It happened in the state of Utah a few years ago. It happened, we know it happened in Holland because we've had Jorg on this show saying it's happened in Holland and it led to massive reform in the game. Let's make that reform happen in our game before someone has to die. That's, that's, it's got to be that simple. And you know what, lads? What, what's really bizarre? How many times do we see some, some knobheads in, in a Maserati filling himself, driving down the M3 up 200 miles an hour? The police are all over that. Mm. All, oh, no one's reported it. They see these people doing wheelies on the M4, on motorbikes. They find them all right. No yeah. one's reported that. Here we have a video of someone getting their head kicked in. I don't hear, I don't hear nothing from the police. Mm. No one's coming to me and said, hey, Matt, any idea? Where was the game? Who were the teams? Yeah. Who's the ref? No. But if you do a wheelie on the M5, they're right in there. It's got to change. It's got to change. I agree. And I think that, you know, um, I've seen, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm sure we're all aware, uh, because of, of the interview that he's given in the media, the, the chairman of the Referees Association, uh, Paul Field, 
he's 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 in tune. I think with everything we've said, really, in terms of from the from the perspective of some serious incident is definitely going to take place, and somebody's going to be uh, killed eventually because because when inaction happens, then you know things worsen and worsen and worsen. Um, you know, obviously, as I've said before, I don't know the ins and outs of, of, of sort of disciplinary um, action. I don't know the ins and outs of Martin. I can see you smiling there. I don't know the ins and outs of these things, and, and you do know you do know better than me. What I will say is, from people I've worked with, okay, in in, in county FAs, I know that they would take it really seriously. But this kind of thing generally isn't happening on their patch, which I think is an interesting, you know, parallel. Okay, I think it's an interesting parallel to be able to look at it and to be able to say, actually, this isn't happening in that area, and don't really know why it's not happening in their area. But what I do feel fairly confident about is, if it was happening in their area, that there would be strong action taken against it because they have a real strong safeguard for their referees. I, I, I smiled, uh, uh, you know, Paul Fields uh, is a good guy, actually. Chairman of the RA, good guy, talk to him. You know, hopefully, you know, we can work together going forward. As an organisation, you know, let's be honest, we, we it's probably similar to me and you, Nate. We both want the same thing, only you do it in a bit more corporate way and I throw an agonise in the pot. Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, we we, we both want, want the right results. We want more protection for referees. Yeah. We want stronger punishments, stronger prison sentences. Yeah. But I just think, you know, I, we've proven as an organisation, and, and the RA should pat us on the back because we've made them up the game. And I'm telling you the, the, that Paul Fields told me that. We've made them up the game because we've been very vocal, very public. If it wasn't for us, that video would be hidden away at a, at a, at a county yeah. FA. That's, what, that's the difference we've made. Now, we'd love to work with Paul Fields, have a cohesive approach on it, but we can't just go down the routes like the RA have of going after the Census and Council. That could take absolutely years. When sitting on the doorstep is the FA, who make their own decisions and else, who can change things on a drop of a hat, apparently. Mm. They can bring soon bins in after a short pilot like that. They can, they can oh, 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 let's throw college shirts on their freeze. Let's let's be equally challenging publicly, Paul, as you are at the Centres and Council to the FA. Yeah. Criticize them as openly. I think we've got to say we've got to say that they're really good initiatives, Martin. That, that you know, you've yeah. talked about them. Really, really good initiatives. And I and I think that I think that you know what I will say about it is I, I totally understand why Paul Field and his team at the RA are looking to, to go towards the Centres and Council because I think You've just alluded to it there. If the attitude from a legal perspective, when we're talking about law and order, the authorities, the police, everybody at that level was to then say, like we do for motor offences, if you're on your telephone, if you speed and whatever, and somebody is able to film that with a dash cam, we're gonna we're gonna be able to upload that to a there's a there's a there's a file on the police website where you can upload your your data and then you can send that in and it'll be reviewed. The, 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 they can then set up the same sort of portal where we can upload yeah. physical abuse on a football pitch and then that can be then done. And I think the sentence of counsel and, and from a legal perspective, that does need to happen. But obviously it needs to also marry with uh, probably a new set, if I'm being totally honest, probably a new set of, of, of legislation or laws that get implemented by the, the FA in terms of their, the way that they go about punishing and I think that those two things need to marry. So I think you're quite right there. We, we do it. And, and, and incidentally, the, the thing that's annoyed me is that this was our idea. The RA weren't doing this. We went to them, I've got documentation, drag it up, drag it up, the Love the Whistle documentation. We sent it to the FA 2016. And in it, we said, look at making the match official a vulnerable role. That then gives you the same protection is, is firemen, of, of um, porters and hospitals, nurses. It's a, it's a vulnerable role. Very, very easy to do. And then, uh, and then two years later, they never even answered us. In them days, we were, we were just developing. We weren't the voice we are now. Ignores us. Kept chasing them, kept chasing them, kept chasing them. Nothing. All of a sudden, the Daily Telegraph ran with an article about Fernando Lopez two years ago. 
when Mr. Ellery says, oh, well, we've asked the Sensing Council or whoever to designate the referee as a vulnerable role. That was us. But that was us. Telegraph went back to him and said, is this true? Oh, well, oh, you, oh, ah, oh, never said nothing. That's two years ago, Mr. Ellery. Mr. Ellery, you said two years ago you were talking about getting it designated as a vulnerable role, which gives us the same protection as as other people within specific roles. Don't need a census council for that, Paul. Paul, you don't need it. It's with David Ellery. He's told us he's doing something about it. That's two years ago. And the reason why they get away with it, because you won't go public and put pressure on them via the media to say you're not doing it. Don't send an email and say we're, we're dealing with it professionally, away from the public eye. It doesn't work. It doesn't, we've proved it. So join us, Paul. You know we, we, we think alike. You know we like each other as, as individuals. Let's work together. But you've got to put pressure on the FA, not the Sensing Council, because it'd be quicker, mm. much quicker. Well, yes, but I, I, st- I still, like I say, I think there's still, there's still parts to play from both. And I think if the FA could say, look, we've created a, 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 a charter here or a, or a set of guidelines for county FAs to punish and for national FA to punish from, and this will marry with a proposal that's been made to the Sentencing Council, then... But the one thing I would hope no, is that it's... Nate, Nate, the county with that, mate. The county with that, equally, have it the other way around. This is this is what annoys me. You you we, we we talked about body cameras. We're going to do a petition. We're going to go to Parliament. We went to Tracy Crouch. She was brilliant with us, absolutely brilliant with us. She said we can't do anything because they make their own rules. We we can't do anything. So I, how is this sentencing council going to affect that? How is that going to do it? What, we, body cameras, a legal device to use for your own protection in the law, in the law of the lands. David Ellery won't even look at a pilot for them. So this, this strategy is honourable and as professional, and they've obviously got legal guidance, and I know they've got legal guidance on it. Some top guys are helping them, and, and, and I'm on your side, guys. I'm on your side. But listen, go to the... I know they give you money. We know the FA give you money, so that might be part of your decision-making. You don't want to cheese them off. I don't know. I don't know. Go to them. They stop things happening that are legal in the law as its land, lads. We can't have body cameras everywhere else. We can but the FA stopped that. So why are these centres and council going to be any different? The, I mean, the, the, I am flabbergasted as to why change is so opposed in the FA. And with, with body cameras, I've seen it pop up on Twitter a few times asking the question, why not give referees body cameras? And there's always someone saying, it's a safeguarding issue. What if the referee films kids? Um, what if the traffic warden films kids? What if the copper films kids? It's not, it don't, you know what I mean? It's, it's a scenario in which you can't really say, um, you you just have to put that on the side because it's there for the referee's protection. It's not going to pick up anything really that, that is going to be an actual safeguarding issue. I don't think, um, but it's when, when you want to affect change, we need to look at the ways that are most effective. Now, like Martin has, has said, Go for the jugular. Go for the FA because they're the ones that can snap their fingers and change will happen. Look at what happened when Marcus Rashford got involved in uh, a few weeks ago while lockdown was happening uh, with, with sorting all the, the kids out and the families out with with like the just, what was it? The, the food thing, the basic. Foods, yeah. yeah F- food, the, the vouchers. Food, I think food, 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 food a million or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he, he, so get, get someone that influential uh, and you can affect change very, very quick. In this situation, with with referee assaults, with uh, the, the, the uh, you know allocating them the vulnerable vulnerable person status, is something that the referee have the power to do just on a whim, just just Absolutely. like that. And if we don't have a Marcus Rashford esque figure, what we need to do is rally enough people, enough grassroots referees, enough grassroots teams, players, coaches. Uh, fans, anyone involved with football, just to, to let's let's make it a community movement. Let's get everyone on board because the message should be, um, and I think ninety nine point nine percent of people are on board with. Um, if you strike the referee, you don't get to play football ever again. That that should be it. That should be your time in football over. Just completely done. Um, and if it's if it warrants it, the police are involved straight away. The police don't for some reason like getting involved. Just because it happens in the white lines of a football pitch, it, 
It doesn't it's, make it's, sense it's, to me. It doesn't make no. sense why the police will go, oh, do you see that fella over there getting lamped? Yeah, yeah, it's illegal, but it happened on a football pitch, so we're not arsed. Get asked, be asked. It it sh- absolutely shocks me that 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 is a thing. I I, I again, I'm going on. I so just forgive me. Let's let's go back to the body cameras, right? It's a legal device. Any referees out there who's done an academy game? They got these big poles in the corners with cameras on. Yeah. Mm. Has anyone asked the referee? Is it all right if we if we if we film you? No. They go away. All the highest profile. Academies, every single one of them will record their game. No one says to the referee, hey, you see if got an issue, are you under the age of 18? Are you? They just do it. Mm. But we can't do it. And we're not doing it for training. We're doing it for protection. All right, I believe for training. Absolutely fantastic for training. For the user will, will, will learn from it as well as the people being, being. So it stays away. That's absolutely dead in the water. Dead in the water because you don't ask us referees, can we get villains? What's the match of the day? Match of the day live from Old Trafford or Anfield. Go straight into the crowd. There's a kid. No one asked him if they can uh, film him live on the celly. How oh, do we know he's not in care? Mm. All these things that they say for referees not to use body cameras. They don't use them for other, other situations with academies on yeah. TV. And with regards to safeguarding, you can record anybody as long as you can prove it's not for nefarious means. Yeah. It's all there. It's all chartered. There's another reason this isn't happening. And I throw the corner down and say, because someone knows how bad it is and they don't know how to address it. And they don't want, they don't want the evidence. Well, yeah, if, if, if everyone that kind of, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but you've said that the safeguarding argument isn't an issue. It, it's not, it's not, a, it's not an argument for a, not having body cams, as far as I'm concerned, take it off the table. Um, Another argument I've heard for not having body cams is it will escalate the level of violence a referee may potentially receive. This one I got off social media when body cams were mentioned. Uh, the fella said, uh, if the referee's got a body cam and the, the player has assaulted the referee, the player now knows that that's being recorded. So he may assault the referee further to get the body cam off him to then destroy it by whatever means necessary. Which again, I think it's... It's it's an overreach as to why you shouldn't have a body cam. Well, do you know what happens there, so What happens there then? You have got a very different crime. Mm. It's robbery. Mm. You've got it. You're, you're in. A, you're not in a magistrate's now. Yeah. You're going to Crown Court now, mate. Exactly. I'm, I'm just pulling leaving Mike. He's done it again. <laughs> I've done it again, me Mike. I'm just so animated. I'm so honest. I'm not in a good mood. It's mm. a particular team. I'm. I'm. All these. They're all bollocks. Yeah. It's bollocks. There's no it, solid there's no, argument as not, to why. I can't find. Whatsoever. One. No. Not so ever. And I've been in these meetings and I've told them, oh, yeah, we don't really know there's privacy issues. We don't know who owns the footage. But isn't that the point of a frigging pilot? Yeah. Isn't that the point of a pilot to find out what it is? What, 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 tell me. Because, and then we, our, our device that we've, we've created, and we, we've opened it all up to the FA, use it free. I respect. Trademarked. Turns your phone into a body camera. £30 a year. Not hundreds of pounds. People say to us, oh, you only created that to make yourself money. No, it's not. We solved the problem. Mm. If we wanted to make money, we'd be charging 200 quid to go for it. It's 30 quid with a strap, encrypted. No one can see the footage. There you go. They send it to us. We de-encrypt it. If there's anything in nefarious, you don't get it back. Job done. Yeah. FA know we've got it. We've sat down with him. Martin Glenn, who's now left, he's chair of the Football Foundation now, chief executive. He went, we need to look at this. And Mark Ives correctly said, but we can't use it on the pitch, Matt. I said, I know that. So let's use it as a trust line monitoring system in youth football. We've all got these respect marshals. Give it to them. Mm. Just give us the backing. You can have, with trademarks, you can have the rights to use it because we've trademarked I respect. Can you believe that? We own I respect. The FA owns I respect. We've got that. We give it to the FA. Try it on the side of the pitch. See if it stops the behavior spreading from the pitch at a young age onto, onto the pitch at an older age where someone like Satyam gets his head kicked in. Just don't do nothing. Just don't do nothing. Yeah. That's what they're doing. And yeah. then IFAB, in the wisdom, which is irresponsible and a disgrace, to then, after the campaign we have for body cameras, what's their, what's their response to it? Yeah, yeah, let's sort this out. It's a terrible people are getting battered. No. IFAB put in the words, no cameras in Law 5. Yeah. Oh, thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. And who's involved in the technical advice to IFAB? David Ellery, 
It, I had a feeling you were going to go there, Mark. I know. Do you know what I mean? He's the second advisor to IFAB. We've asked. We've got lawyers working on it as we speak. That they're going to work for us pro bono. We approach an IFAB, and we want to go to the CAS, the Court of Arbitration of Sports, because we're a charity and not a funding it, um, a football body. They don't recognise us, but we get around that because they haven't. And again, one for IFAB here. They haven't told us. We've wrote to them. Who suggested the change to Law Five to include the words "no cameras"? Because in your constitution, IFAB, you you must say. Who suggested the change? What is the reason for the change? And when the change is coming in? All they've done is the date of the change that come in. I don't remember anyone saying, oh, on the 31st of April, we have seven, 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 so says we're going to bring you new cameras. And here's the reason why. Yeah. It's bollocks. Yeah, they How skipped they over the whole proposal. They skipped How it. How did they get went... away with it? Mm. How did I get away with it? And then, then, then you say things like, um, oh, well, do a pilot. Do a pilot. Oh, we've got to ask why. It's not someone else's IFAB. Well, I've got a minute. He just did a pile of Simbins, just like that, just like that. But you won't, for something that protects referees, can learn from referees. We've used it. We've used it in tournaments, and it's amazing. We've got the footage. Our partner, Les Leagues, that we're going to work, work with, a national pilot, we'll, get the, we'll prove it works. We've already got footage where a player says, oh, he's got a body camera, don't say nothing. We've yeah. got that footage. Watch when that comes out. We've got evidence it works. So therefore, have your own pilot and prove us wrong. That's yeah. what we're asking. I, I mean, what I, what I want to sort of add to this, to, to go back to the, to the whole issue, really, is I, I, um, I saw an absolutely fantastic tweet, and I, and I put it through the, um, through the third team account saying, look, Totally agree with this from a uh, senior, le- le- senior lecturer at the University of Portsmouth, uh, Dr. Tom Webb, who's also a coordinator of the Referee and Match Official Research Network, which researches abuse and the well being of match officials. And basically, he made a, a, a really good tweet, which basically said, Sport mirrors society. We've seen, in, we've seen that sports across uh, sports and countries in the research that, that they've conducted at, in Portsmouth. Uh, match officials in different sports uh, will report similar issues and they need to learn from other sports and consider what has worked because all sports have issues. And I totally agree with everything that he says um, it, with regard to that. And, and it's something that I think I've said on previous um, previous episodes of this as well. You know, there's absolutely no doubt. The statistics prove it. Since the UK voted to leave the EU. We've seen a rise in racism. To turn on the news at the moment and see the attitude of the people who are supposed to represent us towards other human beings and uh, and how much of a disgrace that is, to be quite honest. Um, but also, we need to look at society as a whole because football, people who play football are members of society and attitudes that are being promoted and accepted and not challenged in society are going to be issues that ultimately we as referees are left to deal with when it comes to when it comes to, to the football. You know, I, I, I'm coming into my sixth season this season, and it was probably October, November time last year, actually after I'd had the first racist incident in my refereeing career uh, in the September that they, that they came came some with some proper protocol, the FA, on this. Um, and I mean, I was really pleased when I looked at it from a personal perspective because I looked at it and I thought, you know, 95% of that I've done as the FA would want me to do mm. off my own volition, which, which really pleased me from a personal perspective. And I hope that, like, you know, I've talked about referees being good people with a good concept of right and wrong. And I hope that the majority of referees would do um, the same things that I did. But, but I think the fact that they need to come up with that protocol because they've seen that the way that the landscape is changing is absolutely damning. And it affects this, by the way, because, you know, we are talking about people who are BAME, yeah? Okay, we're talking about people from different cultures, different... You talk about... Um, you know, the guy that we were talking about at the beginning there, okay, 
he's, he's not maybe got, you know, he's not called John Smith, is he? Oh. And, and people will know the referee's name and people judge people. You know, I know people in life, in society, away from refereeing, who've changed their name because of the connotation that that name has and their difficulty to be shortlisted for jobs. Mm. All of this matters and all of this comes into this because everything that goes on in a football pitch, on a football pitch, I should say, is part of society. And society has a lot to answer. The attitudes of human beings and people we live with in our communities are a, are, are a really, really big part of this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. And one of the things I, I want to touch on uh, on the same subject is um, the football club who were uh, not the team that assaulted the referee. Um, Sporting Club D Mundial, I'm reading it out here because I got the email up. Their uh, secretary uh, contacted us. Big apologies. So, look, oh, you know, we've seen the work you've do. You know, we're a ref- big referees. We are absolutely ashamed to be involved in that game. And we feel a little bit embarrassed that we didn't, we didn't do enough. Wonderful, wonderful tweets they put out. They were, they were right up there saying uh, how gutted they were and they want to do more. And they want ref support to go over to the, to the ground. To, to where they are and, and do a presentation to them, to the youth teams and stuff like that. So again, the positive is that's come out of this has been great. I believe the other team uh, released a statement on Twitter. They said, you know, that they've disowned the player and that, you know, they, they, you know, they defend the, the, the rights of the referee to prosecute them. So I think that movement have, have proven that there's a lot of stakeholders in football who just want an easy game. They want to be a better game. They want it, and we have, we need to get this these these knobheads who assault referees and abuse referees. They're, that's all. That's all. You can be framed knobheads. Don't, don't have them in the game. Enjoy your game better. If you really want to see your mate giving a referee loads because of a bleeding throw in, then you go through with your two hundred pound pair of yellow boots on and missing six yards. You having a laugh? You having a laugh? Have a look at yourselves. Yeah. Re- really? And I think when we all get together and start talking about it and realize, yeah, referees make mistakes. Yeah, we get it wrong particularly at the lower levels, you know, we might not be fit enough, but we want to give a bit back. We not, might not be experienced enough, but we want to be, give a bit back. Some do it for money, let's be honest about it. There's no reason to hit you and give you lows. It really isn't. Just get real. Let's all make this game better. I think that they've got a wonderful brand as well. Um, they're associated to a magazine that mm. has a big, uh, Monday Al, uh, who, who have a big, you know, an image um, that they want to be protecting and they want they want... You know, you, you imagine, you know, we talk about people who do things in good faith. You'd imagine that they've set up a team in good faith because they want to be part of football. They want to be involved in, in it more than just commentating on it from a magazine perspective. They want to be a part of the game and they want to, they want to be involved in it. So I think that, you know, these considerations are really, really important when you look at, at what they're trying to do. And then they've got this platform, this media platform that we talk about with the magazine so that they can then have you guys down in Riff Support, can give that presentation, can do full features on that, they can do pictures, they can do everything. They can use their social media, they can use their magazine, they can use all the platforms and ultimately become a really, really good force with that. Yeah. The, he, he, Dan, the Dan Sanderson is the lad who emailed me. He's the editor, editor of Monday Al magazine. And, and he's, he's been really positive. We're having some really positive dialogue and we know something's going to come good out of this. If we can get the other team involved and when we go down there and, 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 and show a, a, you know, a real strength against this sort of nonsense, yeah. people can learn from it. Just, just come on, just enjoy the game. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I was game. talking about, uh, it being a community movement to affect real change in, yeah. in the game. Uh, using the, the influence of the clubs at the grassroots level. Yes, they've got a, a social media presence and they've got um, a, a print media or digital media presence as well. But let's, let's yeah, let's get on them to, to work together to, to affect real change in the game because it should have, it should have been Fernando Lopez. That should have been the moment that things changed. It didn't, yeah. it didn't. And now we've got, uh, we've got Satyam Toki and, and um, let, let's make this, the moment that things change let let's that let's let this be the let's spark get them on. yeah let's get them on let's get both teams on representative of both teams let's prove that the majority of people in football even in that game with a horrible incidents are good people 
Yeah. And just one referee is to referee and one player is to yeah. play. Well, you listen to the people that were, I think, either filming the video or next to the cameraman or something like that. Uh, and you can hear them saying, get a grip of that lad. Get him yeah. off. Get hold of him. Sort him out. Shut him down, I think he says. Yeah. Something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which, which, I mean, you you watch videos on social media sometimes. Um, and especially, I mean, you see the police going through all sorts with, with them just trying to do their jobs. And people are egging. If someone's assaulting a police uh, officer in any way, shape or form... You get one absolute moron that's going, yeah, fucking stick it to him, yeah, get it. And, at, you know, at the the absolute silver lining, I suppose, is there wasn't anyone going, yeah, fucking stick it to the referee. Everyone that saw it was like, this is fucking awful. This is bad. Get Sort sort this out. And I think the other thing as well is, and this touches on it a little bit, and I'm not absolutely saying that this is an absolute certainty, but I think that part of the reason why the police may view what goes on within the white lines as not something that they need to be involved with is because they see us as them, mm. the equivalent of them. Yeah. What the role that they play in society is the role that we play on the football pitch. But what we don't have is tasers and pepper spray. And that's, that, that, that's a significant not yet. difference. Not well... Yet. And and he, that yellow, that white line thing, the banister spray. Oh, sorry, mate, it's a CS guy. Oh, exactly. And the thing is, we joke now, yeah. but will it come to that? Will, 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 will we think about, do we need to carry things for our protection? That can't be, that can't even be a, a conversation that should be had in, in, a, in a serious nature. But the way it's going... Yeah. You know, you skip over I, body cams, then okay, yeah. so okay, we can't have body cams. Well, what can we have as an alternative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we look recording devices. There's little pens that I've got cameras on. Yeah, there's you know, there's this, this, this. I'm going back to the IFAB, they were quite thoughtful, weren't they? No electronic devices other than watches. Yeah, uh, oh, honestly, really thought what uh, look, even though they were going through law five, let's make sure we can't have any freaking body cameras. They never changed the coin, did they? Coin's still not in the referee's equipment. Yeah. What a knobheadery. Yeah. What a shit housery. <laughs> he concentrated on the on the IFAB on on body cameras. Yeah. We haven't got a coin. Get a life, will you? Yeah. Listen, I want to touch on something that, that Nathan says. Stop laughing. Oh, oh, we've had. Hold on, um, hold on. Sorry, is, sorry, sorry. Uh, Just hold that point. I had, I had drop out for a second there. I'll edit this bit out. Just. My internet's gone to shit. Okay, I think it's back. Okay, go. Hey, w- one of the things that, that I even mentioned there about the connect between the police and, and referees and or authority and the referees is that it's not helped by how the FA and governing bodies frame things. We have laws. They're not laws, they're rules. Mm. I know you know the old school game. Excuse me, Miss Cassidy. It's, it's rules. Laws of the rules. game. Listen, that suggests... That their authority. Mm. Even when he, when a player gets sent off, they get charged like you would in, in, in the courts of the land. Mm. This doesn't help, Nate. This doesn't help how they're framing laws and they're framing charges. Yeah. You know, what's all that about? Well, I, you know, I think, but I think the thing as well is you look at the, you look at the, the demographic. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen um, statistics, the demographic of makeup of referees. The top two everyday occupations of, of referees are teachers and policemen or women. So I think that, that those, those again, play right into the hands of unruly school children. We talk about referees who, who have that. We talk about people who break the law. And, and I've worked with some colleagues out on games where they, you know, that we've been having a sort of a, a cup of tea before the game and, and, and you're having a chat about how things and some of them say, oh, well, I came in off night shift and we had a GBH and all sorts and I've been getting spat out on the night shift and all this. And, and, and yeah, okay, we have some people who, who, who do that. But I guarantee you that for every, well, not for everyone, but, f- but f- for police officers, we have librarians who are referees. You know, we have people who, obviously, as you said, give, want to give something back to the game. That that they, they don't they purposefully choose to do jobs in their careers that are not confrontational. They are sedate jobs, office jobs, whatever it might be, and they, they shouldn't have to go through this. 
No. No. Hundred percent right, and it, it, it also funny enough, talking about the commitment to referees, I think the divorce rate is really high in referees because yeah. it demands that's expected from them. So there's loads of other things where where the demands on referees are, are, are quite high, and you yeah. connect you can connect it with other um, other trades. You know, we've said about a bricklayer is more likely to use foul language and be more of a thick skin. An account, an accountant who, who works in an office where yeah. foul language isn't used. There's all these little subtleties mm. that that affects the referee and how he performs. And yep. I think I think that's a fair shout, mate. That really do. And it's another thing that you know you talk, you touched about it. You just touched on it at the top of the of the podcast there when we talk about the support network for the referees that were assaulted over the weekend. We talk about referees um, the other week when we talk about Anthony Taylor being appointed to the FA Cup final about the importance of your wife, your kids, mm. your mom, your dad, everybody around you, and, and how they are just as crucial to the success of you as a referee, you know. They've been at Hitchin on a Tuesday night. They've been at Barnsley on a Wednesday night, you know. They've done all that, and, and it's not easy, yeah? So it's really, really difficult to actually be able to turn around to these people and to say, this is happening to your wife, husband, son, daughter, sister, brother, because they they may have made an honest mistake. It's 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 absolutely galling. Well, that's I it. I mean, this is the thing: the, the referees that are getting attacked are just doing their job. I I don't I know ne- I don't think any referee that's ever been assaulted uh, was having a maliciously poor match to deliberately wind someone up. And even if they were, that's not an excuse for assault. But it's like, no. would you would you uh, say you were going the chip and you got a bag full of bad chips? Would you go back in there and lamp one on the cook? It's the same that sort of thing. Fantastic. It's a fantastic point you make there, and totally, totally agree. You know, I know, and it and it's, it goes back to the you know I'm probably swearing on, on here more than I ever, but going back to the the gobshite attitudes, they 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 know a lot of referees wouldn't wouldn't hit them back. Mm. They, they, they probably, so the player they think right is a free shot to look hard here. Yeah, that's that's what this is all about. But it's no coincidence that there's like some of the lads out there. Like remember, I went back. I told about that time when someone robbed me van. Back, I beat up those two lads. And no, I, I haven't heard it. Story. Right, I'll put it up. What I'll do so, I'll send a photograph. Of it yeah, it was in the paper. Me, me, me van got stolen. Um, I, I was a builder then. One of my vans got stolen. And four days later, um, that's how long ago it was, Liverpool were playing Genoa in, a, in, a, in a, I think it was the Europa League then or Champions League, whatever it was, years ago. And I was getting back quite late to, to rushing back to, to, to the to our house. And there's my other van, comes on in front of me on the motorway, up at almost be interchange, M4 and 5. And I thought, oh, Grace, you've got me van back. Someone's got me van back. So we'll put it into tears, overtook, go alongside them. And it's, these two knobheads who were in my car, who robbed my car, Baseball caps on, cans of was he skull or whatever on, on the dashboard. It was an Astro, but a flat, yeah. a flat dashboard. So I thought, oh, they never seen me. So I followed them, followed them. Then to go back to Cleveland and Somerset, where it was. They were going round and round about, but they parked behind a lorry that was undoing logs. They didn't realise it was turning right because they were probably drunk. Anyway, I knew the way this lorry wasn't going to go. So I went up the arse end of the van, jumped outside, beat them up, got my van back. But great, everyone's happy. Papers get hold of it, interview me. Going to be in the paper, brilliant, absolutely maze up, maze up. I'm, I'm telling Mrs. Going to interview about the paper. It's in the paper tomorrow. In the paper tomorrow, first line is pint size, have a go, hero. <laughs> Your bubble was burst. But what had happened was, I went to a football match, and the team I was refereeing gave me so much shit the previous week. So I'll, I'll have you ref and all this. I was going, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Never went for a pint after I went straight home. But I'm, I've got these again after it's been in the paper, and we put the article up. Am I, am, I, am I smacking these two lads and getting the van back? Did I get any shite at all of those same players? No, not a jot. Not a... No, that's funny, isn't it? That's funny. Earlier, when he didn't know that, that I was a lad who would get out and smack someone in a van, I was fair game for them. After yeah. The same person wants a pint with me afterwards. Oh, aren't you that lad who... Uh, you're that lad, aren't you, that, that battered those car robbers? Yeah. Pint size hero, burst me bubble. But that's the story. That's what goes on. If they knew we, we, they were boxers and we were... Bouncers and we would do whatever we do. 
wouldn't have us. They just yeah. presume you're a knobhead with no mates and you're a fair game. Shame on them. Soft target. I'll tell you what as well. If, if I've just talked about a load of them being policemen. If if they knew a policeman was refereeing the game, yeah, I think it would make a huge oh, difference. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. What would happen if a police officer acting as the referee got assaulted of that beauty? Mm. Well, exactly. I, I, I'm sure the police would be right on that one there. Yeah. I wonder if he'd arrest them himself. You know, heaven forbid, love our police officers, love all our emergency services. Imagine if that happens. Yeah. They'd be all, all over it. All over it. Guaranteed. Not even, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I've got another uh, Zoom. I was going to say, I'm looking at the time now. Uh, we are approaching uh, that critical moment where the, it's pretty much run out. Um, anything you guys are doing this week that you want to plug? Or anything that you've well, had, had going on? Yeah, on the topic of, of obviously what we've been discussing today, um, I'm doing a, an interview with a great young referee from Berkshire and Buckinghamshire FA, uh, young referee, youth level, um, just 15. He's, he's done an absolutely wonderful piece on um, to, to his classmates at school, uh, and it's going towards his GCSEs. Where, um, where obviously he, he's talked about, you know, what is a he, well. First of all, he talked about what is abuse, what is referee abuse, what he thinks about it. He's spoken to colleagues about the abuse and about what their observations are about it. Um, he, he he's given guidance for how people should um, should be able to do this, um, and it's something. It's a really wonderful story, and I've intertwined it with quotes from. Uh, the man himself here, Martin uh, Cassidy, and his good friend Paul Field as well. Some wonderful quotes from for the two from the two of them about the particular issues. And yeah, it's it's really really good stuff. Brilliant, he's in. That sounds wonderful. Let's make sure. Yeah, we're out on Friday, that. Martin. Yeah, and if, if, if you when you put it up on your site, mate, I'll put it up on our site. Let's uh, get, get the lads. And, and and if it's, if it's paid, just think. You can come on our blog and do a little piece, then then let's have that too, as long as it's okay with us. Oh, parents. definitely, yeah. I think he'll be. I think well it's excellent that. because yeah. what he's doing there as a fifteen-year-old presenting to classmates is fifteen-year-olds are prime. You know, we get a lot of participation uh, in that age group uh, in in youth football, and if it makes them think about the way that they approach referees in that area, then he's done an absolutely fantastic job. And for the colleagues, refereeing colleagues of his who were thinking about taking up the whistle as well. It's a yeah. great advert. I took it when I was at school. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And you obviously, you know, it helps you with Duke of Edinburgh and everything when you're at school. It's a really, really good thing. It's 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 really good. And it's um yeah, let's let us let us do something with that. And it, and it's and just before we wrap up, we obviously want to go again with with Satyam. Yeah. You know, he's got a, a one month old child as well. Do you know what I mean? And and a lot of the people that happens with lads who get assault and ladies heaven forbid, uh, referees who get assaulted, they go back to families and their kids see them with black eyes mm, and, yeah. and cut eyes and, you know, just get real. Just have a look at the effect that you're doing. Don't see the kit, see the person. And that's just, just, just be a better game. Hashtag enough is enough. Mm. Totally agree. Totally agree. Wholeheartedly endorse everything you you both said there. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay. It's been a bit of a heavy one, this one, but... Um... There we go. It was Let's, necessary, wasn't it? Yeah, it was that, necessary. I was going to say, after the weekend we've had with four assaults that we know of, there were, you know, mm. God knows yeah. however many more assaults went unreported, weren't yeah. tweeted about, weren't, you know, didn't make the Facebook pages yeah. or whatever. It's four that we know about, and, no. and that's four too many. I know. And I just want to apologize for the of swearing I used this one. It's, I'm the one that answers the hotline. I'm the one that takes the tweets. I'm the one that takes the Facebook messages. Uh, I'm not. I don't want any sympathy because the sympathy's got to be all with them. Yeah. So just understand when it goes on and on and on, and you see these wonderful, lovely individuals, good people, getting battered just because they got a whistle in their hands. Mm. It does make me angry. It does really make me and sad. I, I think it's totally understandable, though, Martin. You know, you dedicate your life and your career to this, and you care so much. That yeah, okay, it's going to boil over at times, but it's because of the passion, the care, the commitment that you give to referees through the work you do. So I, I think it's totally, totally understandable. Yeah, fair play. Yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. 
All right. Uh, well, there we go. Thanks very much, gentlemen. We'll, we'll wrap it up there. And thank you uh, for watching or listening, depending on how you consume the content that we've just made. And we will see you all uh, on the next episode. Thank you very much. And gentlemen, bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.